Hello guys, Zuljin here and welcome to Victor Fron. So this is going to be a short mini-series on this awesome, awesome game that I've been playing over the last few weeks. Uh, they just added a new contents patch and uh, it's actually early alpha. The game is far from finished, uh, but it's very, very playable and really fun when you start getting into it. So I think a mini-series will cover it better than a first impressions gameplay. Um, now that I've went through a good portion of the content, on my own in my own uh, save file I think I should just start a new kind of know what to expect so I can commentate a little bit better without sounding like a complete noob so let me go ahead and press play here I'm gonna start on a new save file and you'll see some things like placeholders and things of that nature I don't want to spoil any plot or that much plot so I'm gonna go ahead and take out the cutscenes um, and I might actually edit out some of the um, some of the still loading screens like this as well. I think the only load times that we really get are the first go round though. So this should um, this should be relatively quick. There we go, and you'll see there's like placeholder here. Uh, but this is gonna go into a little bit of story, so I'm gonna avoid that. Um, the game plays a lot like Diablo. It has an unbelievable, n great, control support so I could plug in my Xbox control to this thing and really go ham but I went through the first portion of the game with my uh, mouse and keyboard and I actually rather this um, I can hold right mouse to kind of pan my camera around and I can move with W A S and D the keys are left click E and R I think I changed that by default I think it was Q and E but I rather E and R as my two special abilities and you can also have two sets of weapons a little bit later on when you level up so let's go in here a lot of the environment you can break you can actually jump in this game you can even do double jumps and stuff and it does help you avoid attacks and things of that nature so a little bit better than Diablo in that aspect like they never had that um, that vertical plane in Diablo which made it really really good so let's go a little bit further in and see the graphics and the music are great this is kind of like a tutorial area it kind of shows you a little bit of stuff that's going on you can move out of the way you can press some cool abilities like this uh, let's see here there's just a few abilities. The sword is something that I haven't played with a whole lot, but it's always what you start out with. Um, the weapons kind of define what class you play. So really, really cool. J is the new codex. So you also have a, like a little journal of things that you can keep. Let's go ahead and use these big attacks here. And it kind of fears them um, when you hit them. Some weapons have special abilities. Let's see. The beginning stuff really doesn't have a whole lot of specials. Let's see. If I hit I here, we'll go to the inventory screen. And this is like the potions that you can get. This is what they call a demon power. You can get different pickups later on that'll give you different demon powers. They also have cards that allow you to kind of define what you're good at with your class. Since there's no specific class system in, uh, basically it's just the weapons and how you fix up your loadout, uh, along with some alternates that will be unlocked later. So really, really cool. There's a bunch of there's a few different tabs of the same things, and there's also this hunter's outfit or this wonder's outfit is the new one. Uh, you gain overdrive over time, but attacks no longer grant overdrive. You outfit forever signifies your support of Victor Vran during early access wear it proudly very cool so I'm actually gonna change to that because I like that ability a little bit better and now we have this cool new getup uh, looks like I took a little bit of damage there now I went through the first portion of the playthrough with a shotgun and now there's actually a new type of weapon which is called a lightning gun. Uh, it was part of the content update that came out just the other day uh, and I'm really excited about playing with that because I haven't really toyed with it yet to see what it does. There are boss monsters in this game. It's it's all really, really cool. You could jump over obstacles like you just saw there. It's a good way to find secrets actually too, you know. Let's see here. And as you can see in the top right, there's a mini map. If I press tab here, it kind of shows, it zooms it in so that I can kind of tell what's going on. Castle Zagor is what's coming up there. Fallen Keep, and it doesn't give me um, a mouse over of what that is. So go a little bit further. They did a little bit of gold rebalancing. There's also a wall jump that you can do, which is pretty cool. I know I'm kind of all over the place, but uh, I just want to let you guys know all of the stuff that I've I've seen and to pick, you know, to kind of bring you, to kind of help you guys get on the pace that I am already. So that's a checkpoint. 
Uh, it's pretty much just like if you die, you get teleported back to it. Uh, I don't know what the penalty is for it either. Um, and also, I think there's a certain button that you can press to kind of dive out the way. Let's see into controls. I already forgot it. Uh, controls, double tap to dodge. Fair enough. So I should be able to... Yeah, there's a roll ability. There it is. That's pretty intuitive, right? Okay, so it looks like I can't go through that door. Let's go around the outskirts. I love how the field of view gets a little bit blurrier as you go. And let's see, I got a new codex entry for spider eggs. These guys can hatch spiders if you aren't quick enough. And here's to enter the dungeon. Uh, it gives you a kind of a sneak peek of what you can expect in the dungeons before you go to an area. The gates to the keep are shut tight. I found an alternative route through the broken sewer gate. By the looks of it, the Something else passed through here before me. The place reeks of death, and I'm beginning to doubt that there should be any survivors here. So, that kind of gives you a little bit of insight in the plot, and kind of the things that they have working towards the storyline. So let's go a little bit further here. And it looks like this is a day at end, but we can go up this stair. And it looks like there's a little bit of training dummies, and it's going to bring us through a tutorial of sorts. So after you get um, these it kind of gives you some potion rewards um, press one to use a healing potion and press three to activate a demon power so you can hold it and actually move your mouse everywhere to kind of target it uh, let's see anything else that i have to do here no nope, it looks like i could go on ahead very cool so let's see i'm not busting down all the loot either i'm kind of hoping for my next my next weapon here because the sword is one of these things that, I mean, it's all right, but also there's a lot of things. You see how I'm getting overkill, like I'm doing more damage and stuff. Sometimes you can get little mini quest rewards, and it looks like I just picked up my shotgun, which, by the way, I love. Um, I know uh, Drax was playing this game as well, and he really, really likes uh, the hammer, which is a two-handed weapon that you'll see soon. But you can see the weapon statistics here. Uh, the vicious shotgun does 16 to 32, which is on the left here. You can look at it um, with zero. Um, I don't know what all the stats are. It looks like a 10% accuracy, 185, oh no, 10% to crit, 185 crit damage, and it's worth 396. Critical damage increased by 35%. Um, and this one, you'll see the same statistics for the basic sword. So let's forge on ahead. Now, as you notice, the, the icons changed up in here. Uh, when you mouse over, it says you can fire with a basic attack. That's basically my left click. Um, Time attacks correctly to inflict vulnerable condition to the target. Vulnerable. Next attack on this target will score crit. Uh, there's also aim shot. Single target recharges whenever an enemy is killed with a shotgun. And this is a point blank shot, which it's multiple targets. Uh, speed and movement increased or increased by 33%. So they all have their different abilities here. That's the spread, and um, this is pretty cool too. That's like a single shot with the E and R key. It doesn't look like I could go through here. Uh, these are little shrines. Sometimes they're, they'll be highlighted and glowing, and you can do some cool stuff with them, uh, like you'll get bonuses. So let's go a little bit further ahead. Now I can kind of take care of a lot of these, uh, these little weapon racks and stuff like that around. All right, so it looks as though there's not much left here. Let's go in. Alright, I released the guards from the cruel fate of the under un <laughs> undeath and took whatever I could from the fallen keep. I can see the imposing silhouette of Castle Zagor, standing proud like the tallest headstone in the graveyard of a city. I think I can make out lights on the upper floors. Perhaps someone survived behind the tall walls of the castle. Let's hope so. So yeah. Having a lot, a lot of fun with this game. I'm so glad the content ID patch came out. Look, monsters coming down the walls. Isn't that cool? That's something you don't get from a whole lot of these type, kind of top-down games. Uh, looks like it's getting a little crucial here. We can jump out of the way to kind of dodge everything going and use our, our spread attack right here. And as you can see, too, every time I kill a monster with this shotgun, I can kind of double up and fire, fire that single shot. Uh, which does a heck of a lot of damage. So it's a nice little combo to keep going here. This looks like some sort of... Oh, this is to hang people with, I bet. The gallows, I guess. Is that what you call them? Alright, let's see. Can we go anywhere right here? 
It doesn't look like it. Nope. We can go this way though. So I'll make it around this way. And I love how you can see. It looks like I can go down there. I, sh I probably could. Although you'd probably have to go all the way around again. So there's a chest right here. Let's check that out. And it looks like I got another shotgun. Let's check it out and see what kind of statistics I got. So 16 to 37 with a little bit less chance to, a little bit less damage per crit, but a better chance to crit and all of us, all, a little bit more damage. I actually think the crit chance is better. I like the, um, I like the, the first weapon that I had here. So let's go down and let's continue our journey here. Some more spiders. Gotta love the shotgun, man. Really, really do. And if you hear that heartbeat, that's like you can't use it. And you'll see that little clock come up for cooldowns. So, you're dead. Alright, enough about the mechanics. You guys probably understand a little bit of what's going on. Now I'm just going to have some fun. I'm going to enter this castle. Castle Zagor is only remaining, or is the only remaining beacon of hope in the godforsaken city. There are survivors here, tough, grim, and desperate. I wonder for how long I could use this place as my base of operations before the forces of darkness sniff the living souls <laughs> hidden behind its thick walls. Alrighty. The special attacks of the sword have an additional effects on crit. All right, so this is kind of like the little base area. There's a couple of guards here. There's some stairs that kind of goes uh, up, and I don't know actually what's up here. I've never been up here. There's some comfy seats. Can I jump down from here? Check that out. I love it. Okay, so this is the world map that you can access from this table. Uh, there's a shop here, I believe. Let's talk to this guy. It's got a trade icon, and it looks like this is the stuff that we can buy. Uh, these are the hammers that my buddy Drax like to use so much, and it doesn't look like there's any lightning guns for sale yet. Um, how about the shotguns? How did they look? 13 to 31, 14 to 33. Nothing super impressive. I think I'm just going to go ahead and check this gal out. What does she have? I love the decorations on the wall and the lighting and stuff. Really, really neat. Uh, looks like I can't afford anything from here, too. Vicious Sword of the Leech. Oh, this looks devastating shotgun of mauling. I really like that. 15,270. Yep. Not going to happen anytime soon. Let's uh, let's go a little bit further in here and see what these guys are up to. Doesn't look like he has any icon. What's this all about? Uh, I can talk. Pirates, the private stash. Private stash reporting for duty, sir. <laughs> I'm commissioned directly by Her Majesty's Majesty to serve as your attendant and take care of your personal possessions. You can leave anything you don't need here, and I'll make sure it awaits you when you come back. Uh, so we can hit select, we can hit F, and the private stash is just as big as our inventory. Very nice. Well, we don't need that right now, so we'll go ahead and speak with Her Majesty, Queen Katarina. Thank you for participating in Early Access. We don't want to spoil the story yet, but we have opened the starting areas for exploration and adventure. Your first task is to kill a particularly nasty vampire hiding somewhere beyond the Royal Gardens. Use the map to get there. Other than there are other bosses, secrets and dungeons hidden throughout the world. When you get the Royal Gardens, when you get to the Royal Gardens, check out your challenges from the in-game menu. Each area or dungeon offers five unique challenges for you to complete. That's another thing. There's like mini games in each little area and it kind of keeps it interesting. Also, it keeps revisiting areas a little bit more interesting as well. Instead of just doing level up uh, grind runs, um, it kind of gives you some incentive to go. So this is the world map and the icons that you can visit are marked into these places right here, such as the Royal Gardens. And it looks like the map is going to be pretty big eventually. Uh, right now, there's going to be a bunch of lit up locations as we progress through this in the first few episodes so let's just select the royal gardens this is the mini menu they were talking about and the six different quests you can get use 10 demon powers slay spider eggs slay all the spiders nests in the labyrinths um 
it looks like there's zero out of five of this. Slay Argus, the dreaded mage that looks like a unique boss or a champion, and there's only one of those. Slay the chest master, there's only one, and it looks like we would have to use 10 demon powers and 25 spider eggs. And these are the different rewards. These banners are for experience. This the the gold is for gold naturally, and this is an item. So really, really cool. Let's go ahead and enter. Some of them are timed. There's all sorts of different quests that you can take on. So let's see here. We are going to... Let's head left. Before we head in there, let's head left. We'll take the side route. And I love the green. Can we jump over this? Nope. Not quite. We can't get in there. The water's really beautiful. Looks like these are some frost crawlers. Oh. I didn't even see you there. Gotta get those nests out. It really helps having this shotgun in this section right here. Nice, nice. And it looks like there's a little bit of leftovers <laughs> from that. Okay, so let's see. Spider nest. It looks like I got it. Let's take a look at the codex right quick. So, growing like tumors in the midst of demon infestation, the nest spread their progency? Progens <laughs> Progeny? <laughs> Across the cursed lands of Zagorvia? Zagoravia? I don't know how to pronounce that word. Scriptures claim that demons' nests could spew out spiders in an uncontrollable stream of flesh until the end of the world. Wow. I have found the hard way that the only way to put an end to is to slay the nest. Uh, there's a bunch of different codexes that you can select to kind of give you some uh, information about the, the monsters. And as you can see, the graphic detail is awesome. Along with the music, it looks like they have different categories as well. Look at the flames. Really, really, really cool stuff. Okay, so if we go to the main menu, by the way, and go to Maps and Challenges, you'll see that it keeps track of all of my stuff here. Uh, looks like I've gotten one of the spider eggs, and I didn't use any demon powers yet. So as soon as we build up a little bit of overdrive, which we already got, we should be able to use that. I think I can use it just with the three keys. So let's, let's get that out of the way right now. And there's my overdrive, and that's one out of ten. We're going to use it again on that nest. And I'm going to try to keep keep my dodge up as I go. All right. See, use two of ten demon power. So it kind of keeps up with the tally as you go, which is pretty neat. Okay, it looks like we're at a dead end. Uh, we could... Oh, wait, there's something... Did I forget something here? It looks like I could go a little bit further down here, and there should be some... Yes, 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 yes. I'd like to use my demon powers while I can. Overdrive just charges slowly instead of killing. You can actually gain it fast in certain uh, instances without this cloak, but this cloak is really, really nice to have. Uh, it looks like the way to go is forward through here. Although, I didn't take a right yet. Let's take a right and see if we can uncover anything. Oh yeah, there's plenty of spider nest here. This will help me a little bit with my goal. Oh, here we go. I love this ranged weapon, man. I really do. Got another healing potion there. Which, I didn't find that I had to use a whole lot unless I was in bosses or some really, really crazy areas. And I never had to buy any as well. Ooh, there's one of the hammers. Now, the hammer is a little bit too slow for my pace, but I can still show it to you because it's cool. Let's go ahead and change it out. And the hammer is 56 to 68. It's a two-handed weapon. They're incredibly slow, as you can see. But they are pretty cool. Now, the abilities follow. You can hit E, which is kind of like a charge attack, and you can hit R, which is like a jump and attack. 
Very, very, very cool. It looks like that one had some life steal ability, and uh, all weapons gain an additional life steal ability. Now, what's cool about some of these things is that when you have double weapon sets, you can switch back and forth. Like I could have done that ability and then transferred to and did a quick swap to my shotgun, for instance, to get life steal on my shotgun. So, really, really cool stuff there. Uh, let's see, was that the right one? 16 and 32? Yes. It's about time for a new shotgun, don't y'all think? Alright. Oh, I walked right into that. I didn't mean to. Okay, so now we can actually move forward through here. We've got a lot of our goals that are well on their way. Let's go down here and see what... Spider nest. Looks like a job for demon powers. <laughs> Looks like they gave me another hammer. No problem. That's something I can sell. Five out of ten demon powers. Oh, wow. That was strong, man. All right, so it looks like I got my completed 25 out of 25 spider eggs, and here's all the gold that I can pick up, and that's kind of how you get quest rewards. Really, really cool. Uh, if that would have been experience, the flag would have come down, and as soon as I would have touched it, it would have gave me the experience that I earned. All right, let's go a little bit around here. Looks like there's a few more spiders. Yeah, it becomes real customizable after a little while, too, you guys. There's tons and tons and tons of different cards and the types of weapons that you can get to really solidify your builds and stuff. It's really, really neat. And some weapons are better to handle, you know, certain types of mobs. Some are better to handle groups, while others are better to single target. Some's better to mitigate damage, while some of them are just a lot more tanky. What is that? Essence Wake of Sparks. That looked really, really cool. The lightning effects were amazing. But it looks like we're kind of headed the wrong way for what we want. I need to go where the spiders are. Although this might be like a little side place here. Uh, oh, yeah, there's spiders over here too. Okay. It looks like there's some big ones too. Uh, let's take care of some of these guys. Ouch! Electrocuted. And we'll go further up now. Let's see here. Dead end. I love the hedge maze effect. Looks like it's a little bit too tall for me to jump. Ah, I can jump. Oh, what is that all about? Oh, looks like that's a bad place to be. The little area of effect that those things have. Pretty nasty. Woo! Was that a level up? I believe it was. See on the bottom right here how this icon came up? Let's see, congratulations, you can now equip Destiny Cords, which grant various passive ability. Each Destiny Cord requires Destiny Points and a free Destiny Slot. Your slots and points will increase at certain levels. So, next level, second weapon. So, now I can actually equip a second weapon, or is that from the next level? We might have to do that three. Um, my reward this time is going to be uh, a card that I can choose. So, each level you go up, if I'm not mistaken, you get to to choose a cord now on the bottom you'll see where it says hope right underneath that on the left hand side that one stands for the amount of destiny points it takes to use this cord also signified right here it gives you 200 tell health or bonus health and it's a passive this is the warrior cord five percent melee damage and this is two destiny points for strength, 5% critical chance. Now, I, I am going to select this because I think it's a little bit better of a cord. Oh, hello. I was trying to, um, to, to check out my new abilities there. Uh, let's go back to inventory. And from the inventory screen, you can just select the different tabs here, like if I had extra cards to swap out. But you'll see that I have used two out of four destiny points, meaning that I can use another two here 
or I could use a one. It doesn't have to be full, but I don't have three slots, so that would waste it. Um, you can also do a one and a three. Uh, we don't have any threes yet, naturally, but that's kind of the way that the Destiny cards goes. And now we have 5% critical chance on all our attacks. So really, really cool. Well, that is going to be it for the first episode, you guys. I hope you all really enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more, please leave me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. As always, this is Zuljin signing off, and we'll see you next time. Bye.